In section cha or in chapter three, the topics are going to be measures of center variation and position relative standing or measure of position and box plots. So we're again talking about sieve dot and we're going to not focus very much on time. So it'll be more like sibdo, center variation, outliers, and distribution. Those were the, the um, things that encompass sieve dot. So let's start with section 3.2 in Triola's book um, with measures of center. So we have four major measures of um, center, and those would be the mean, the median, the mode, and the mid-range. Now, the mid-range is just what it says it is. It is the mid-range. So I don't spend a lot of time on mid-range because we already know what range is um, in order to do our class widths from chapter two. So we know what range is. Mid-range means just the middle of that. So you take the range, divide it by two, that gives you the mid-range. So we're going to start with mid, um, the mode, which is a measure of center for every single type of data, both qualitative and quantitative data, and most appropriate for qualitative data, although appropriate in some uh, for some little bit of reasoning behind quantitative data. Then we'll move on to the median and finally into the mean. And I may um, have the mean and median in a different order as we go through this. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is, of course, um, the, let's see, we're going to talk about the mode first. So let's go ahead and come down to the mode. And that would be down here at the end, because I think that's the way that um, that Triola looks at it. But I want to go ahead and talk about the mode the first. So let's talk about what the mode is. It is the most frequently occurring data point or data points. There can be no mode in data. There can be two modes in data, which we would then call bimodal, or there can be more than two modes, which we would call multimodal. Now, when we say um, a mode, we are talking about the most frequently occurring. So most is the very important keyword here. And when we see the data, as we will hear below very soon, um, you'll understand what I mean about the most because sometimes we'll have one occurring a couple of times and another occurring a couple of times and then we'll have one occurring four times. Well, that is the most frequently is the four occurrences, so be careful of that. So we're going to look at an example um, of confinement days, hourly incomes, and then test scores. So we're just going to abbreviate this first one as confinement. So we're going to take a look at the data for the confinement time, and we're going to see if there's a most frequently occurring data point. So 17, that only occurs once. 19, we see one, two, three, four occurrences of that. Four only once, 21 twice, and a three only once. So 19 occurs four times and 21 occurs twice. Which is bigger, four or twice? Well, the four is. And therefore, the mode of the confinement time data is indeed the thing that occurs the most, which is 19. And this um, would be 19 days. Remember that any time that you report a measure of center, it's a really good idea to m report that measure of center, including the units. Now the next one we are going to talk about is hourly incomes here. So as we look at the hourly incomes, we see four and we see nine and we say seven and 16 and 10. They all occur one time. So this data has no mode. Because they all occur one time, there is none that occur more frequently than any other. So that means there is no mode. Now looking at our last set of data here, we have test scores. So in the test scores, I see 81, and I see 81 occurs once there and another time here. So it occurs twice. Then 39 only once. 100 only once, 69 only once, 76, oh, it occurs twice, and then 42 only once. So the test scores is actually bimodal data. It has two modes. So I'm going to write modes here, and I'm going to put a colon this time because there are a couple of them, and this time I'm going to put 76, and, and this is 81. So these are 76 and 81, and I would assume that these were probably percents. 
but it doesn't really indicate. So those are the mode. So the mode is very, very easy to do. Now the next one that we're going to talk about is our median. So finding a median is finding where the mi exact middle of the data is. Now I don't do medians in the touchy-feely way that a lot of books do them. Um, Triola does prefer the method of the indicator function and that's my preferred method as well. So we're going to talk about an indicator function. An indicator function is a mathematical measure or indicator um, of position. So this is an indicator function and it's a mathematical measure of position in the data. So let me write that out. So this mathematical measure of position is going to tell us about where in the ordered data we would find a certain percentile. So we're going to talk about the kth percentile when we do this. Now it's important that we understand what a percentile is. A percentile is a percentage of data below a given position. So if I say the 95th percentile, so I talk about the 95th and then I say percentile, I'm not talking about getting a 95%, not saying that I got 95 out of 100 and that's my score. What I'm saying is that my score's position is such that 95 out of 100 scores would lie below mine. So this says 95 out of 100 scores are below. And that's what a percentile means. So if you take an SAT set test um, and you get a 95th percentile on the SAT set test, you may have gotten four questions right out of 10. But that isn't a 95%, right? But if you got the 95th percentile, how did you do that? Well, what it meant was that if a hundred other people took that test with you, that 95 of them scored below what you scored. And that's all it means. So that's what a kth percentile is. So we're going to talk about the indicator function as L sub k. And L sub k is the percentile that we want and we put it as a percentage, so we put k over 100, and then we're going to multiply it by n. Now remember that n is your sample size, right? So n, remember that this means our sample size. So when we say see this, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply the percentile, written as a fraction or a decimal, because we're writing it k over 100, times our sample size. And that's going to give us a measure of position. Now one of two things can happen. Number one, we could get a whole number. So this could equal a whole number. And if it equals a whole number, then the measure of position we're going to need is actually going to use two of them. So this whole number then we're going to use it and the next whole numbered position. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to um, the ordered data and we're going to choose the whole number that we got and the next whole number and we're going to average. So these are in ordered data. and we're going to average them. Now, if we had um, gotten a fraction or a decimal, so if this were to equal a second option, a fraction, or we could call it a decimal, it's going to depend upon how you look at it, right? If we had done one of those things, then we're going to do something totally different. 
if we had done a fraction or a decimal, then what we're going to do is we're going to go up to the next position. So, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to do two examples where we're going to see these. And I'm going to go ahead and do these new two examples in the next um, little video. So I'm going to go ahead and stand, uh, have this uh, video end here, here, and then we're going to have in the next video the examples done.